Hey, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. What could I possibly have to say today? What could I possibly have to say today? Well, I decided to make a very quick video that should be informative um, on why a watch would not work um, properly or work slowly. Now, if you look at this very nice little movement here, this is a Waltham uh, pocket watch size 6, uh, commonly referred to as a banker's watch. Um, and it is a beautiful little watch. It's not a high grade watch because it's a, only a seven jewel watch. I've mentioned this watch before. And I repaired this watch and got it running superlatively. There's a good word for you. So I got it running really well. And then um, for some reason it slowed down like this. And then I, uh, I tried to figure out what it was. I thought about it for a good solid week, maybe more. Why the heck is this running slow? I figured it was the mainspring jamming, so what I did was I loosened the screws on the plate here. It seemed to make it run a little tiny bit better, but not a, not a lot. Um, I applied oil um, on the on the mainspring arbor, on the top of the mainspring arbor right there, and I should get my pointy things out here. So I applied some oil right here thinking maybe friction is causing this, I'm not sure. Um, whatever it is, it's pissing me off. So, so then on the weekend, I decided, well, let me look at the, the hairspring on this balance here and see if I can look at it under my microscope as it's operating, right? So, so I looked at it under the microscope and then I put the micro or the uh, watch sideways and I looked down, down kind of at, at this kind of an angle so I could see the hairspring operating. And what I saw was two leaves on the hairspring were touching each other. Now, let me just explain that to you. And so all I have to do now is case the movement and we're good. I'm not going to bother doing that because it's kind of boring. So there you go. Thanks for watching my channel. So the tip is here. Hairsprings can be a pain in the butt, but this one's now fixed again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm JD. Please subscribe. If you want me to do watch work, let me know. And I made this tool here and I made the dunker tank. So you got to be able to create your own tools. Otherwise, you're not a watchmaker. Over and out. And there we go. I believe I have solved the problem. So it's not sticking anymore. And it's running at a great amplitude. But it's funny, the, um, the uh, what's it called? The bend over and the top, the first string uh, spring was stuck on the inside of the other spring when I put it back together. I was like, man, it's not solved. And then I just realized that that had happened. So I just took a very screwdriver, nudged it over the edge of that spring. And now it's running really well, and I think I've solved my problem. So, just have a look at it here again. Yeah, it's flinging back and forth nicely, as you can see, right? So it's got a, a great amplitude happening now. Now I'm just, I, I'm, I am doing some hoping. I'm hoping that this thing doesn't get stuck together again, because that would totally piss me off. So we're going to let that run overnight again, and that should be it. That was uh, the whole problem, and the problem was fixed. So I got to case this thing now, and this shouldn't be difficult to case because it's like casing anything. Just put it in the case. That's all. So it's all good now. And uh, all right, we're gonna put this back in the watch now because it is done. And geez, this is the hard part, man is the hard part. I gotta make sure that this does not fall or anything. That's what I'm really concerned with. That's why I have my thumb over the edge there. So I need this to be in place. Come on, get in there. There we go. It just fell in place now. I got some ticking going on, which is always good. Look at it. Now nah, it's sideways. It's ticking, but it's sideways. Just hang on a second. Stop. You're ticking there, buddy. You're not ready yet. Yeah, that's better. Now what I'm not sure of is if that hairspring is still sticking. So I'm going to get a I think I'll look at it underneath the, uh, let me see, can I see it from this side? Uh, 
All right, let me put the screw back just so I have it stable. Mabel, and I'll look under the microscope to see if it's still sticking. Because if it is, then it's going to have to be completely disassembled again, and I may have to take the hairspring completely off and and just see what the hell's going on, right? I'm getting pretty good amplitude, though. Let me get my little pegwood stick here, because I keep this down while I'm doing this. And just make sure it's not riding anywhere. And when I tighten down the balance here, I just want to make sure that it's not going to, the pivots are good. There we go. So that's done. Now I'm just going to look under the microscope. All right. I'm a man of many, many tools. So I have this one here, which is similar to the other one, but I probably can't roll this thing up high enough to give it support. What do you think? And the hole is probably not big enough because I drilled the hole out in the other one I used the other day, right? To make that hole bigger so that the, the movement could fit in there. So I'm not quite sure if that'll work. But this one here, I'm pretty sure it'll work. So if I take this off, take the uh, balance off and just rest on the little knobby here, then the hairspring, the table, the roller table is going to fit between that crack. And this should go right down like that. See that? Look at that. It's almost like it was designed for it. <laughs> so that was one of my designs, by the way. So I'm just going to move this over out of the way, move this out of the way, like that. And now I've got to give this balance some time to relax. So I'm going to do that. And I just move it off to the side and I'll let all this dry out because these these will dry out. I could light them on fire and then it'll dry a lot faster, but if I just lay them down on my table here, there's no sparks that, that will ignite that, so I'm not too concerned. So, And this is spread out pretty wide, so it's going to dry out on its own. So I'm not too concerned about that. So there we go. Looks like a dirty piece. I'm going to get rid of that. And this is a conservation of watchmaking paper it's called. Just spread it out like this. Some of the stuff is still wet but it'll dry off if it's just loosely spread like that. And then this guy here I can actually use the ball here to blow on it very lightly. Again the last thing you want to do is distort the hairspring so you got to be very careful with it. Now the theory is here that when I put this back in that hairspring will not glue together because it's been it's been soaked in lighter fluid, so anything that was gummy should have been removed by that, hopefully. So it's also possible to get a little piece of oil on a hairspring to cause it to stick together, right? There's all kinds of ways that that can get screwed up, right? So I'm just working on this here. Let me have a close look at the hairspring here. Yeah, the pivot looks very good on this wash here. I can see there's still a little bit of liquid down below where the roller table is. There we go. You can hear my wife's car. She's on her way home. So I'll do that. I'll have to take the uh, cap off here and put a little bit of oil on that after. And it's because it's been cleaned before, but there might be lighter fluid in that. Then I just put the cap back on. I can do that while this watch is sitting on this, uh, on this peg here. So I'll do that, put it back on, and see if it's fixed the problem. All right, now I'm going to lower the dunker tank. Lowering the dunker tank. All right, which way do I go to lower the dunker tank? I think I go this way. I'm going to lower the dunker tank and remove it and then leave the 
hairspring to sit there to dry. All right, and I'm going to use tweezers to help here because the there's the uh, basically this you don't want too much stress on the um, hairspring here. So I'm just going to very quickly lower it while the hairspring is kind of removed. And then I'm going to remove the dunker tank from here. Now this solution will not affect the shellac on that hairspring. So that's that done there. So now we've got to take this fuel effectively and toss it outside. Or just breathe it in for about an hour. That will be good. So I want this to just dry on its own. Right? So I could help it by, by hitting it with, uh, like spraying it, but probably not the smartest thing to do, right? Just leave it like this and it should, it should be fine. I'd really like to rest that hairspring though. So let me just see if I can find another tool. So what I need to do is just to take that movement out carefully. Um, I'm going to use my very famous number 58 movement holder. Number 58. Now, I've been using that for the Rolex watch I've been working on, so I've got these smaller Rolex kind of size movement holders. I'm waiting for the mainspring to come for that Rolex, um, and I'm waiting for the mainspring to come for the 7750 for Bill. I hear that the uh, in Europe, the mail, the postal service was on strike. I did not know that. So somebody wrote me online and told me, hey, buddy, uh, you may be waiting longer than you think because they... Postal services on strike because I go oh, wonderful. So get in there. I'm trying to slide this in so it can work properly. There we go. So get that ready. Um, and I need. I got the number. I've got the the dunker tank which I'm going to use to dunk this hairspring in again and wash the crap out of it. So and I know that you guys just love the dunker tank. Much sought after dunker tank. It's the value of this is exactly two dollars as you can see on the side here. <laughs> a little humor for you in case you don't have a sense of humor so so I'm going to remove this um, this movement um, from the watch and uh, and I'm going to take the uh, basically see if I can get a close-up of those of that hairspring stuck together if it's still stuck after I move the uh, the watch so let me just so first you want to pull this out into the set position when you do this and then just unscrew these all right, I'm going to take these out. I got the wrong screwdriver, first of all. all right. Atypical of me. Anyway. So, still a working man, though. Still a working man. Not that doing watch work isn't work. So, I've got the gentleman coming to pick the watch up tomorrow at 3, so I better get this done on time. And it better work. But he actually is more concerned with the Waltham, the other Waltham I was working on that I changed, where I changed the mainspring and that baby is running super well. So, so I'm doing this while it's running. So let me just, this will fall out the other way. So I don't want that to happen. So I got to open the door here and then, um, damn, I'm going to have to, it'll fall out this way. So I'm going to have to take the, uh, take that nice crystal off the top of course when you do this kind of stuff there's always that chance that you could damage what you did already but this is necessary this is my case opener which is like incredibly high end probably too high end for this so I won't have to the good news is there we go the good news is um, I carefully remove this so I don't screw the hands up that there we go just grab that like that move this out of the way i don't want to trip on myself because it's later in the day right now so i do want to adjust the hand so they're kind of even so it's already in the hand adjustment no it's in the wind position right now so there we go just move those hands over hands and i just want to move them over like this so that they're not going to get in the way and i want to put a glove on because Lately, I've been a very good boy, and I've been wearing a glove while I do watch work. Um, so I don't leave any excess schvet on the movement. 
that will cause corrosion later on. Even though, as I've said in other videos, that in the old days, those old Dodgers that did watch work did not do this. Okay, I'm telling you, I never saw a glove on one of those guys. Now I gotta watch my finger in the seconds hand here because I don't want it to be part of the problem as well. So I'm just gonna take this up. I'm trying to do this super carefully because normally I'd remove the hands, but I, I'd spent so much time getting them set in there, I don't wanna fart with them now. So this should just slide out nicely like that. Grab that on the edge, there we go. And I can just put this in the movement holder. The Myers number 58. I'm going to make it, I'm going to size it so it's almost the right size before I squeeze it down here. And I made sure the hands were straight up and down. That way when I remove the, uh, the movement, I won't have a problem. Uh, I actually don't like doing this, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it anyway. So let me look underneath to make sure I got clearance here. Yeah, nothing is hitting anything, so I'm good. And this movement holder kind of protects it anyway, so. So there. Now when you put the balance cock in, see, I'm just gonna move it, have this, have your, have the holder close so you can just go over this way and then put it in, right? So, although I wanted to show it to you upside down to see if I could see if those, if those, uh, hands or the sprint the things are stuck together here so, so let me just loosen the screw here and when I do this take the balance off I always keep my thumb nearby here that way the balance doesn't fall out of the watch which would be kind of a disaster so I don't like that kind of disaster shit happening so now I grab that balance and I hold it pretty tight and it's not moving so I don't want to stretch the hairspring. So put that back like that. And I'm going to grab another pair of tweezers here because I may need two. Two sets of tweezers to do this job, folks. Yeah, because I had this thing working nicely. And the last thing I want is for this to be fouled up, the hairspring. There we go. The hairspring is now out. You know what? I don't want to turn it upside down to show you how they're stuck together because I might end up screwing it up if I do that. But I'm going to dip this, put this down like that, and then put this balance on top of the stud like this. There we go. And I'm going to adjust this so it's as low as it can possibly be, and I'm going to throw in lighter fluid in there, right? and lots of it. Um, and while you have it out, you could also take a look at the, um, you could look at the watch here and you could actually touch the uh, pallet fork to see if it snaps and it did, it snaps back and forth. So that shouldn't be the problem. So all I need to do here is drown this hairspring so that it's getting all the gum off of it, right? So let me get my lighter fluid out and I'm going to top that thing right to the very top. Because this watch was running like you wouldn't believe. Um, it was running so well uh, on the weekend. Like the amplitude was super high. It was got a swing of about... So hang on, let me do this very carefully. It's going to spit lighter fluid out. There we go. I'm pouring it on the hairspring here. There. Now that's at the highest level I could possibly take it to before it spills over the edge of my dunker tank. Um, now I want to see if I can move the dunker tank up a bit even more. I think this is the direction I have to go. Yeah, I'm going to move it up until it actually hits the lip. All right, that is as high as I want to bring it. So that is drowning right now that the hairspring is drowning in there. So, so I'm going to leave that sit there. I'm going to put some watch paper underneath here because I know that this dunker tank, the lighter fluid is going to come out because it's 
it's too it's right at the edge so and you want to catch the lighter fluid before it hits your mat i'm going to look really close with my uh, eyepiece here to make sure that the hairspring is all in there and then i'm going to um i'm just going to leave it in there i wonder if i should agitate it a bit to agitate it you don't talk to it and call it names okay that's another method of agitating a hairspring so so let me just i'm going to make a mess so i want to get some watch paper out here so i don't make too big of a mess and so i'm going to have to take the cap jewel off this again and re-oil it only because the uh, lighter fluid is going to get rid of the oil in the cap jewel so i need to re-oil it which is a pain in the butt but still i gotta do it I'm just going to put a bit of watch paper around this thing so because I got like tons of watch paper. Why not use it? And if you're looking at buying watch paper, you get a thousand sheets of this watch paper. So I don't even think I've gone down a millimeter in the, the depth of the watch paper. So now I can be super brave and rosin all lighter fluid. And I can just spit air into this thing. I also spit some lighter fluid out too. <laughs> so I, there I agitated it a bit. Now I want to top it up because I think this, it's going to be the, um, it's the part of the hairspring that's at the top there. Now see, I poured it onto the balance cock and everything now. So, which really means now that I've got to uh, take that top jewel off and clean it, right? And I got lighter fluid everywhere, so no smoking where I am, okay? Just pick some of this lighter fluid up with this watch paper. This stuff dissolves like it evaporates so quickly. But I got a lot of it on the thing here. I didn't want it to get on the uh, the mat, but I can just put another mat down, I guess. The mat gets dirty, it gets dirty. There we go. Just put that down here. This is everything fine. Let it dry. So I'll leave that in in there for a little while. So I think I'm through dinner. And I'll come back up here after dinner. And but still, I could add a little bit more. I don't want to, but I'm going to. Because I want that to be as high as possible. Because I want that hairspring to do have a really good soaking. And I didn't want to remove the hairspring stud from there. So... And the reason why is because there's always a risk of screwing it up. There. Now it's drowning right to the top. All right. I maybe not do the video until I get this thing working again, right? So anyway, that's it for now. Um, I probably won't publish the video until I get the second part of it done. So if it's not magnetism, then... My hand's going to go in sideways. What could it be? What could it be? Some other kind of tism, I think. It's not magnetism anyway. So so it's got to be dirt. Now, I clean the hairspring on this, so it shouldn't be dirt. But I clean the hairspring, and I guess it is dirt. So it's got to be gummed up in some way. Now, this thing was running over the weekend without a problem. And all of a sudden, today, it decided to stick together again. The two leaves decided to stick together again. So the only solution I have here to fix this, and it runs impeccably when those leaves are not attached, because by those leaves being stuck together, the, the, the actual hairspring won't uh, expand and contract properly, so it's not letting the balance go through its complete range of motion. It's kind of restricting the balance. Eh? So, so what I have to do is, is take this balance out and take out... I might be able to do it with, with the hairspring still studded onto the balance cock, but I'll try that first and make sure I soak that in lighter fluid. So I'm going to just leave that in lighter fluid for like an hour or two just to make sure everything gets off that. I don't want to, you don't want to put that hairspring into a, uh, into an ultrasonic cleaner because it's going to vibrate it way too much. 
you don't want to take the balance itself if you still think it's magnetism which it isn't take the balance itself with the hairspring and everything and put it into the deed magnetizer because it'll end up rattling that thing so much it could destroy the shape of the hairspring so you don't want that so so you take the balance out of the watch um, and then you you basically look at the condition and let me see if I can maybe do that just remove the balance I'll, I gotta apologize for my long fingernails again they need chopping but I'm learning George Benson Breezen which is a tough jazz song so let me uh, let me remove this uh, movement from the watch so all the way from China um, and they sell these things too uh, this I have actually have this demagnetizer as well this one here and they work fairly well this one here I like better because what you do let me just take this apart this is what it looks like it's basically like that and you put the watch movement inside the hole here you press the button and as you hold the button down for three seconds you pull the movement out um, you pull the movement out and it demagnetizes this aligns all of the the magnetic molecules so they're all aligned properly so you can look up your magnetic flux book in engineering and figure out how that does it but anyway that's all you do is you put this put your watch movement in the center of this thing and you press the button and the little red light goes on um, and then you remove the movement slowly and it demagnetizes it. So, and to check the magnetism, I just have a small compass that I use. Let me grab this compass. And it's, it's super small. I just sit this on the watch. It's got a bubble in it even. I sit that on the movement and then, and I put it for this watch here. I'd have the movement out, but I'd sit this right here on the movement like that. And I'd see if the compass is moving back and forth at all. So, and as you can see, it's not. So it's been successfully demagnetized. So it's not, I did try to demagnetize it again to get the watch working better, but guess what? It's not magnetism. All right, I'm going to use my, uh, one of my watch repair manuals just to show you what the hairspring looks like here. So the hairspring would be attached right here. There'd be a stud on here. It'd actually be inward a little bit. And that would be attached to the balance cock. And then this would be this would come down and to be some some kind of curve on this part here because the the two pins on the regulating lever there go down around the hairspring like that and they follow the hairspring so you can speed it up by by pushing them this way and slow it down by pushing them this way well, on this watch as you go down i noticed that this first i'll call this the leaf the outer leaf of the hairspring it was fine when I got to the inner leaf, I saw that the two leaves on the hairspring were stuck together. Now, normally that's caused by the hairspring being magnetized or the watch being magnetized. So, so I demagnetized the watch. So let me show you what tool I used to do that.